2018 Audi RS5 Coupe. Shoehorned between Spain and France, the tiny, landlocked Principality of Andorra is draped over 180 square miles of the Pyrenees Mountains. Fewer than 90,000 people call it home, but many more stream over its borders to enjoy its duty-free shopping, myriad ski resorts, and extremely friendly income tax code. While winter sees the country's beaks blanketed in snow, in summer they're laced with lush, green scrub and encourage a different type of frolicking, exploring the sinuous, two-lane ribbons of asphalt that climb up from the valleys and back down again. It was across this landscape and past shops stuffed to their rafters with discount booze that we drove the latest Audi RS5 coupe. For 2018, the RS5 has been updated to ride on Audi's second-generation MLB platform, the same kit serves under the A4, A5, Q7, and others, and with a twin-turbocharged 2.9-liter V6. The V6 takes the place of the particularly sonorous naturally aspirated 4.2-liter V8 that served in the previous generation RS5. The V6 may be down two cylinders, but horsepower is unchanged at 450, and the turbos increase torque from 317 pounds to foot to a far meatier 443 pounds to foot and also push the output peaks further down the tack. Max power is available at 6,700 revolutions per minute, 1,550 lower than before, and peak torque comes online at 1,900 revolutions per minute a full 2,100 revolutions per minute lower. The 90 degree 6 is 44 pounds lighter than the V8, the car is 132 pounds lighter overall, all blower hardware included, and its two turbochargers are nestled in the valley between the cylinder banks. This hot V configuration's largest benefit is to emissions, according to Audi Sport Chief Stefan Rail. Since the catalysts warm up more quickly, thanks to shorter distances between the turbos, the exhaust valves, and the catalysts. Less plumbing also reduces lag, and this V6 is indeed one hell of a hard charger, with power, torque, and speed coming in a near instantaneous wave that intensifies proportionally to the angle of your right ankle. Audi estimates the 0 to 62 mile per hour run at 3.9 seconds, or about half a tick quicker than the 0 to 60 time we recorded for the outgoing RS5. We think Audi's number is just about right. The Audi engineered V6 makes more torque than any of the company's dual clutch automatics can handle. Porsche uses its PDK with this engine in the Panama but doesn't share that gearbox with other group members, and so the last RS5's 7-speed S-Tronic transmission has been supplanted by an 8-speed ZF automatic. Compared with a dual-clutch box, this torque converter unit's gear changes are slower, yet this is not to say it's slow by any means. The ZF can handle the V6's torque and Rail asserts that customers favor the new transmission's smoother and more predictable step-off behavior from a stop. There is no manual transmission available, and the ZF Automatic's programming is so good and the plastic e-shift paddles so unsatisfying to use that we simply let it work on its own the majority of the time. A livable express. Even as the weaponized version of the A5-S5 brood, the RS5 is easy to live with. It's tautly suspended yet displays a supple ride quality despite its 20-inch wheels and low-profile rubber. It rides superbly in the optional active suspension's comfort and auto modes, and its smoothed-out heaving pavement on French auto routes and the patched surfaces of Andorran B roads with no bobbing or bounding. Dynamic mode is for fun time only, though, as the ride can get choppy, inducing a slight bucking dowering straight-line cruising on anything but the flattest pavement. The RS5's handling is also docile. While it's hugely capable, with high levels of front-end grip, there's little in its behavior to make even a novice driver nervous. It's sure-footed in both wet and dry conditions, and you can get up to speed with its behavior as quickly as the car itself files on miles per hour. This follows Rail's philosophy for Audi Sports RS creations, he believes that a car is too difficult to master if an owner goes to a track all day and is still lopping off chunks of time lap after lap. He wants his team to deliver a machine in which it's easy and safe to quickly find its limits, and they've done so here. The steering is faithful and accurate, 
with quick, predictable turn in behavior, and it's more natural than before, albeit still lacking in feedback. The car rewards smoothness, the Quadro all-wheel drive system and standard torque vectoring sport differential working to keep you online and delivering max thrust to the ground when you boot the car out of a turn, at which point you can fill the torque shift reward. The default split is 40% front and 60% rear, if the car detects slip, up to 85% can be sent forward, or 70% aft. Push too hard into a corner and there remains a whiff of understeer, but it feels more balanced than before. Nonetheless, this is a car that prefers a rapid pace, not a frenetic one. In addition to the standard iron rotors, the RS5 is available with optional, and huge, front carbon ceramic brakes as part of the Dynamic Plus package. We drove cars with each setup, and deceleration was excellent with both. While one carbon-equipped RS5 displayed a bit of top-of-travel mushiness to its pedal, a second one didn't, it may have been that the first car's brakes weren't quite bedded in, but overall this system is predictable and certainly stronger than the already capable standard brakes. Given this car's luxury GT bent, though, we'd skip the carbon brakes unless we planned on attacking mountain roads or racetracks with some frequency. This story originally stated that the RS5's engine was Porsche engineered, it was actually developed by Audi. We have updated the story to reflect this information.